What is going on YouTube? Joe here with Color Nation Media and welcome back for another live Pokemon Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire Wi-Fi battle against the subscribers slash follower on Twitter today. We are going up against Luis in an Ubers battle. This will be the first Ubers match, uh, Wi-Fi match I should say, uh, taking place on the channel. So I'm pretty excited about that. We're going to use this team three times of course. I'm going to be taking a couple of battles after this. Uh, by the time you're watching this video, I already have taken the battle, so don't worry about... Uh, asking for them on Twitter or anything, but speaking of which, those of you that have been asking in the comment section and on Twitter, you know, when are battles, all those things, I usually take battles at least once per week, most of the time, unless I have a huge stockpile of videos uh, and I need to just post them, uh, I usually take battles at least once a week, uh, I do tweet out via Twitter, so that link is in the description if you want to follow me there or whatever, you can do that. Uh, so hopefully that addresses those concerns. Uh, now as for the team here, we have a pretty fun team, I, I have a Ferris seed, so... <laughs> That's how you know things are going to be interesting. I couldn't even bring myself to bring a Ferrothorn to an Ubers match. What is wrong with me? I have problems. I have issues, ladies and gents. But that shouldn't be news to anybody. So uh, as for the team here, I wanted to bring Zekrom because I just love using Zekrom. Part of me wanted to bring Rashiram, but uh, I think Zekrom just fit better on this team. So I've got a choice band in Zekrom. This thing hits like a truck. Bolt Strike just kills everything that doesn't resist it, basically. Um, and I also have Volt Switch on there, so we can get some momentum. This guy's a Bidoof! He's bringing a Bidoof to this battle! Here I was thinking I was all cool bringing a Ferris Seed, and this man has a Bidoof on his team. I stand corrected. I, I just have no room to brag. Uh, we do have a <laughs> Mega Mewtwo X. It's a bulk up set, uh, and it also has Taunt, so I can prevent things like Giratina from willowing me. Um, although I don't know that I would want to stay in on a Giratina anyway. Uh, that thing's going to be a problem, actually. And that Xerneas is going to be a very big problem, too, because Geomancy is just, just I don't know, it's overpowered, basically. Uh, I'm going to lead off with Barbara to get up some uh, some hazards and such. Uh, we do have Defensive Eveltal and Choice Scarf Kyogre, and then we also have Squidzy, the Tentacruel, which is specially defensive and should be able to uh, at least check the... The Xerneas, depending on what its coverage moves are, I don't know that it would normally carry anything to hit me other than maybe Thunder, but that's pretty inaccurate. Uh, if he gets up to plus two, that will kill me, though. So, gotta watch out for that. And I also have Toxic Spikes on it, so we can set up a lot of hazards and wear his team down. Uh, I do want to get up Stealth Rocks, though, because that Cure him White, uh, that thing starts unleashing powerful, uh, likely Choice Specs attacks, I think I'd just lose. He'll definitely be able to weaken my team enough for uh, Xerneas to come in and sweep me. So he's going to lead off with Clefable, and I think I want to switch out immediately just to scout for a potential Flamethrower slash Fire Blast. They don't normally carry it in Ubers. They're usually unaware over Magic Guard because it allows you to at least check Xerneas, which is a huge problem. Like, every team has to have a check to Xerneas. That's how big of a problem it is. Um, as he is just going to go for the Stealth Rock. That still doesn't tell me if he has Flamethrower or Fire Blast yet. Um, if he's a Stealth Rock set, he probably doesn't have it, but I just wanted to be certain. I don't want to uh, sacrifice... Don't want to sacrifice poor little Barbara. No, it's not happening. It's not happening. So I will uh, take this opportunity to set up some Toxic Spikes. He doesn't really have anything that can absorb that, so I'm free to do that here. I don't know that this will have anything to hit me with, so he is going to switch out, and he is going to go into Giratina. This thing is a problem, uh, especially if it has any kind of recovery. Uh, the only recovery it gets is rest, so I really hope it doesn't have that. Otherwise, uh, that's going to be a, even more of a problem. It's probably defensive. Most of the altered form Giratinas are. Just because it just, it takes hits left and right. It's just, it's ridiculous. It's ridiculous how well this thing takes hits. Um, now, if I happen to have Eveltal in when this thing comes in, or if I can get Eveltal in for free, I can taunt it to prevent it from doing Willow shenanigans and resting if it has rest. Uh, and then I should be able to wear it down with foul play. But that's not really an option right now. I don't want to switch into a Willow because I have no way to get rid of that. And I might need to rely on Sucker Punch later on in the game, especially if that uh, Kyurem becomes a problem. It could be Choice Scarf as well. So I'm trying to uh, think of the long-term effects here, because I feel like this could potentially be 
Uh, either a really long battle, or I could just get swept by something like Xerneas if I'm not careful. So I'm going to go into Barber here, as he does go for the Will-O-Wisp, so I'm glad I did not switch the Eveltal in. The residual damage on this stinks, but it's not the end of the world, because it's just there for hazards, basically. Um, and checking things like Zekrom, but my opponent doesn't have a Zekrom. So, uh, I could go... I think T-Wave is going to be just not really useful at this point. I don't think this thing has Taunt either. Like, this thing has no attacking moves. I didn't even go with the uh, Gyro Ball or anything. So, he's just going to go for the Shadow Ball. I can take that. And, wow, I took that way too well. This has zero special attack investment. It has to. There's no way it does that little, because I'm physically defensive, not even specially defensive. Uh, so even with the burn, I think I might be able to barely take one more, potentially. Is that possible? I don't know. It's going to be close. Probably not. It's pr I'm probably just going to barely go down. I mean, I could try to set up some spikes here, but I don't know if that's going to be worth it. Do I really have another play? I mean, I don't really want to switch anything in on this, even though it is kind of a weak Shadow Ball. I just don't want to take unnecessary damage on things that I actually need when I don't need Ferris Seed. Uh, I might be able to live that burn damage, actually. And we do get off a layer of spikes. That's going to be very helpful, getting some chip damage off on Xerneas when it comes in. And we do take the burn. So that's good for me. Um, let's see. I'll just go for T-Wave here if he wants to, you know, not attack me. <laughs> He's just going to finish me off with Shadow Ball, though. So that is to be expected. Barbara goes down, and uh, she did her job very well. She absorbed some hits. She had a status on her. She was able to set up Stealth Rocks and a layer of spikes. I can't really ask for much more. Um, and that puts me in a good position against the Xerneas and the uh, the Kyurem. So hopefully I don't get completely destroyed by them. It doesn't just, um, just doesn't make it so that I win against them, but it does pressure them a little bit. Especially that Kyurem, which is likely choiced in some way. So switching in and out is going to be difficult with those hazards up. So uh, I feel I'm kind of tempted to go right into Zekrom. But then I'd have to make a prediction. And that's a 50-50. I don't know that I like too much. Just because he could very easily go into the Clefable. Otherwise, I would just click Outrage. If he didn't have that, I would just click Outrage and this thing would die. Like, I don't care if you're physically defensive. You're not taking that. I'm going to I'm gonna go into Zekrom here. I feel like I have to make a little bit of a play to get some momentum going. I could go for the Volt Switch as well. But I, I really just want to click Bolt Strike. I'm so tempted to click Bolt Strike because that will just Oko Clefable trying to switch in. Uh, and if he gets really cheeky and tries to switch in his Xerneas, which I don't think he would do, uh, that would remove the biggest threat to my team, honestly. Uh, Volt Switch is probably my best play here to get some damage off on this thing, if he wants to stay in. And just see, see what he wants to do. I mean, see how he wants to play this. That's Yeah, that's what I'm going to do. I, I want to see how he's going to play this. How are you going to react to this? Are you going to leave it in, or are you going to try to switch in Clefable or uh, bring in the Xerneas? Let's see. How are you feeling? Are you feeling aggressive? No, uh, you could have just potentially sacked your Giratina there, but okay, fair enough. So he's going to go for the Will-O-Wisp here. Maybe predicting me to over-predict or just sacking Giratina for no reason? That had to be, that had to be a prediction. That had to be a prediction. I've played this guy before and he's not a bad player, so there's no way that, uh, yeah, that, that had to just be a prediction. There's no way he would just leave his Giratina in and die for no reason. Um, so... Let's see what I want to do here. I could go into Kyogre. Because I don't care about a burn. I could also go into Squidzy. But if I let this thing get weakened, the problem that I have is... Then I don't really have as much of a check to Xerneas. And I'm, I'm super scared of that thing. I really, really am. Like, I feel like it's going to sweep me. <laughs> I do. My team is not too well prepared for Xerneas. Which is kind of silly, to be honest, because it's probably the biggest threat of uh, the entire tier. And I didn't bring really a check for it other than Tentacruel, which I don't know how sufficient that is. So I'm going to go into Kyogre here. This thing is likely physically defensive, I would think. And he is going to go for the Willow again, so he's just spreading burns all throughout my team. 
And I know that next time I go into Zekrom, if I click Outrage, he's going to go into Xerneas and get a free Geomancy. And I will cry because then I will lose badly. I want to at least put up a fight here. If I'm gonna if I'm gonna get swept by Xerneas, I want to put up a fight. So I can go for Ice Beam here and uh, dish out some some decent damage. And we will see what he wants to do. If he wants to leave this in again, he might. He just might. Now I would think that Ice Beam would be a two a KO. I am modest Scarf, so I'm gonna be dishing out a lot of damage. A lot, a lot of damage. I don't really need Kyogre for too much, so it's kind of an expendable member of the team, to be completely honest. I don't really need it to check too many things. So I can kind of play it a little bit recklessly, take some damage on it. Uh, as he actually is going to switch out here, he doesn't want to take an Ice Beam. And he's going to go out into the Clefable, knowing I'm not going to go for a Water-type move. He is going to be poisoned here by the Toxic Spikes. And he's going to take Stealth Rock damage so we can confirm that he is indeed unaware, as all of them in Ubers pretty much are, just because there's a lot of setup sweepers. And with the poison, is that going to be a 2 a KO? It just might. It just might be. Mm, now he's got lefties too, though. Uh, he's probably got Soft Boiled as well. I would assume that's what they usually carry, I think. Unless he would be Wish Protect. Is soft boiled? Is that legal with unaware? I'm, I, I'm not sure what that's illegal with. It might be illegal with unaware, in which case he's probably running moonlight or uh, wish protect. So we've only seen the stealth rock from this thing. So I'm just gonna go right into uh, Squidzy here. I'm not too afraid of this thing. He is gonna throw up a wish, so that is his recovery. And I can take this opportunity to set up another. Toxic Spikes, if I would like to, or I can fire off a Rain Boosted Scald here, which will hurt something. I mean, he does have a lot of Dragon types, so he could just pretty easily just switch into Giratina, I guess. But, I don't know. I don't know. I could wear it down with Poison, though. So, if we force the Giratina in, I guess that's not the end of the world. I'm just going to set up another Toxic Spike here. That's what I'm going for. I want to badly poison things. That'll put a timer on things like Xerneas, too. How many times have I said the word Xerneas so far? I feel like I've said it like 50 times in the 13 minutes that this video has been going on. Is he going to show the Moonblast here? Knowing that uh, I guess I'm not going to kill him. Maybe he predicted the Toxic Spikes or didn't care if I killed him. That's also possible. Uh, Clefable isn't too useful to him other than Wish Passing. Um... I don't really have any very, very threatening setup sweepers. I have Mega Mewtwo X with bulk up, but that doesn't really threaten his team. Like, he's got a ghost type and two fairy types, which means Mega Mewtwo X does nothing. So, uh, if anything, Mewtwo will probably be fodder later on, just because it's not a good matchup with his team, really, at all. And the only things that it would be good against, like the Kyurem, uh, we have other ways of handling now, especially because we have those hazards up. So, poor Mega Mewtwo, not getting any action this time. We'll have to see if he gets uh, any action in the following battles. But I guess I can just go for Scald here. There's really nothing stopping me from doing that. As he is going to withdraw. And uh, he's, I guess he's just content with being at full health with his Clefable. As he is going to switch in his Giratina to be badly poisoned. And he's going to take no damage from this Scald. Doesn't matter that the rain is up because... Yeah, just, it doesn't matter. It's a Giratina. It just eats up hits. That's what it does. It doesn't take damage from anything, basically. <laughs> uh, yeah, that did zero. That did zero. The rain is going to stop. So that is a bit unfortunate for me because I kind of liked having that extra rain dish recovery. Rain dish plus the black sludge is useful. But at least we're wearing this thing down. That's really what's important. If we can get it to a point where I can just kill it with a bolt strike then uh, I basically just get a kill in general. Because if Zekrom comes in for free, then something dies. Giratina would be the only thing that is keeping me from going for Bolt Strike. Because it still would be a solid 2 hit KO on the Kyurem as well. So with that plus Hazards, I don't think he'd want to switch that in. And he shows off the rest 
which means I don't know how I'm going to kill this thing. I really don't know how I'm going to kill this thing. Um, I'm probably going to have to get Eveltal in here and taunt him and wear him down somehow. Like maybe have him switch in on the Toxic Spikes when he's awake and then taunt him so he can't rest off that damage. But he could always switch out, that's the thing. So I guess we need to keep Eveltal healthy just to take this on because I don't know how else I'm going to be able to break this thing. Hmm. Yeah, Mewtwo definitely can't take it on. My coverage move is Rock Slide for things like Ho-Oh uh, and Lugia. That doesn't do anything to Giratina. I do have Taunt on Mewtwo as well, but uh, Shadow Ball is not going to feel too good, and I don't have Recovery outside of Drain Punch, which doesn't hit Giratina. This thing is a huge problem. Wow, more than expected. So I'm going to go into Kyogre here. We're going to see if he has the Sleep Talk as our Drizzle is going to activate, so it's going to be a little slippery as the rain starts. And please don't have Sleep Talk, too. Please don't. He does have Sleep Talk. Okay, so we've seen his entire set. Uh, it's got Shadow Ball, Will-O-Wisp, Rest, Sleep Talk. We're taking all kinds of burn damage. We're below half now, which really is unfortunate because our Kyogre hasn't really done much at all. I feel like it just, yeah, it just hasn't done anything. In fact, it's only used one move, and that's Ice Beam to hit Clefable, and then it switched out, and it still has taken all this damage. I don't think we have much of a choice, though. I think I have to go for Ice Beam again. He leaves it in this time. Is that a 2-hit KO? It just barely misses out on the 2-hit KO. He's going to wake up next turn. Oh, this is not good. Unless we manage to get, like, a high roll. As he is going to pull the rest this time on the Sleep Talk, which is unfortunate for him. If he got a Shadow Ball, uh, I may have died to burn. Potentially. I feel like we still would have lived just a little bit, though, because this is defensive Giratina. Haven't been able to figure out what side it's defensive on. From Judging by that Ice Beam damage, I would guess physically defensive or maybe a mixed defensive spread. I really don't know, though. I don't want to just let Kyogre die, though, because Ice Beam's not going to kill. So I am going to switch in uh, Evelsil because he is going to go for a rest here when he wakes up. That's I'm pretty sure about that. So, uh, yeah, he is going to go for the rest. And I would like to get rid of these rocks as well, but Giratina is also preventing me from rapid spinning with Tentacruel. So, oh my goodness. This is going to be a long battle. This is going to be a long battle, unless I get swept by um, something. Probably Xerneas, to be honest. But, um, yeah, then it will be kind of a short battle. But, well, what am I talking about? It's already like 18 minutes in, and uh, it's 6 to 5. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah, if I'm going to break this, it's it's going to take a while. I guess I have to taunt you, because three of your moves are non-attacking moves, and he is going to switch out, actually, and go into his Clefable, which I'm still okay with, because I can actually wear this down, because I, I, I can prevent the, um, the, the recovery. Couldn't think of the word there, my goodness. All of the words are eluding me. So we're going to get our lefties back, which is nice. And the only thing this thing has to hit me with is Moonblast. That's not going to kill me. I don't know if I want to stay in on that regardless, though. I'm really tempted to just go into Tentacruel and try to Rapid Spin. But he's just going to switch in Giratina. He has nothing stopping him from switching into Giratina. Like, he loses absolutely nothing from that. Because I can't do anything with these Fairy types. Man, this team has very good synergy. Like, my only checks to Giratina uh, gets stopped by Clefable and Xerneas. And the threat of letting Xerneas come in for free is, um, yeah, enough to make me want to cry, <laughs> to be completely honest. I'm going to go into Tentacruel here just because it resists the Moonblast. He doesn't have any Fire-type move, and he's going to pull a double, actually. So he lets his Clefable take all that damage and then goes into Cure Him. This thing getting a safe switch is not good. Like, he's going to get badly poisoned, obviously, and he's going to take uh, the rocks damage and the spikes damage, so look, look at all that, that passive damage we got on this thing as the rain is going to stop, which also stinks, because no more uh, rain dish for us. We can take one hit from this thing. We can definitely take one hit from this thing, because I'm fully specially defensive. If he wants to go for earth power, I think we can take one of those. Um, and then we can protect... 
And then I think we would just have to sack Tentacruel, but then he would die to the poison damage at that point after three turns. So I'm going to go for the Protect either way, because it's very likely that he's choice in some fashion. We can scout what he is going to lock himself into, as he does go for the Dragon Pulse, actually. Um, I don't know what he was thinking I was going to switch into. I definitely wasn't going into Zekrom. Like, I'm not going to let him take damage when that's the only thing I have that can Oko Giratina. Uh, what was he thinking I was going to go into there? Dragon Pulse, as opposed to... Oh, maybe he was thinking I was going to predict the Earth Power, and uh, he didn't want me getting a safe switch into Eveltal. So he is going to go for the Dragon Pulse again, because like I said, I think he's choiced. That did nothing. That really didn't do anything at all. Wow. That looks like Scarf damage to me. I feel like if that was Specs, it would do more than that. And we're able to get a Rapid Spin off, which is absolutely fantastic. Because those rocks were really uh, not Eveltal's friend, basically. He didn't like those so much. So I don't really have another play here other than to go for Protect. He, he knows this, but he can't switch out. That's the thing. So, am I really going to kill this thing without ever attacking it? I mean, I could Scald if I really think the toxic damage isn't going to be enough. I'm going to Scald. I want to be sure this thing is dead. I don't want to have to take more damage than is necessary. Because it's not like that was doing too much anyway. So, I'll just go for the Scald. That's going to ensure that this thing goes down. It's kind of hard for me to eyeball that, and I, I didn't want to take a risk of, you know, having to take an extra Dragon Pulse, I guess. But, I mean, I would be getting more lefty, so I guess that kind of a moot point maybe that was just taking unnecessary damage I don't really know but the important thing is that thing is out of the way and that was one of the things I was really worried about at team preview uh, and in addition to Xerneas and obviously Bidoof Bidoof is the scariest thing on this team come on now it's a Bidoof in all honesty I don't know what that thing's gonna do to me it's probably got like uh, I don't know. I don't know. What is Bidoof run? Super Fang, maybe? Focus Stash, Super Fang? I just, I'm beyond, beyond words on that one. He is going to go into the Mawile. This thing is threatening, but, uh, it's not the end of the world. I can protect on this thing, but he may predict that and go right for an SD if he has that. And that is not something that I'm a fan of. I could sack Kyogre here to get rain up. But I feel like I'd be playing with fire if I did that. Because if he really wants to predict my inactive turn, so to speak, he can just set up SDs and then poop all over the place. Um, I don't really have a check for this either, actually, now that I'm thinking about it. I mean, Squidzy here does resist the stab, so I don't know that he could kill me in one hit. But I would have to get the burn with Scald. Like, I don't have any other switch-ins. Zekrom dies to a play rough. Kyogre, obviously, is going to die to a Sucker Punch at that range. I don't have any switch-ins. I have to go for Scald. I don't want to go for Protect because I don't want him getting up a free SD. So I'm assuming that's what he's going to go for here. Because he, I don't think he can kill me in one hit with anything from the range that I'm at. So uh, we're going to fish for a burn right here and hope that we get it. Come on, Hax Gods, Roman, come through for us here. And we do get it. The first turn, Scald, as he does go for the SD. Not going to lie, that is quite unfortunate for my opponent. But uh, he was playing with fire right there by even going for the SD. Because, you know, he, he knew that there was a chance I was going to go for Scald. And that there's a pretty high probability that that was going to happen. And the Hax Gods were going to kind of just rain on his parade so to speak I'll go for Scald again as he doesn't go for Sucker Punch he actually goes for the play rough and we might be able to take just kidding was that a critical hit that's not even a crit oh my goodness this thing is stupid how in the world did it do that much damage it's burned I get that it's at plus two but come on now that did basically 50% that was a resisted hit too and I'm max HP that's just that's just crazy to me. That's just beyond crazy to me. On a side note, shiny Mega Mawile is pretty darn cool. I'm loving the pink. Good stuff. Very good stuff. Now, I can go into uh, Eveltal here and just click Sucker Punch because I will out-prioritize his Sucker Punch. 
and there's not really anything he can do about it. If he goes for SD, he will die. So that doesn't really help him at all. I pretty much put him in a checkmate position. He doesn't have any way to get rid of the hazards either, so if he switches out, he dies upon coming back in. So my opponent's team was just filled with threats. He actually matched up very, very well against my team, which is unfortunate. Like, it was almost a perfect matchup. I'm getting, uh, I got very lucky with that Skull Burn there. Not, not even going to lie. I was going to lose at least one more Pokemon had uh, I not burned there. So, that is that. Mawile is going to be dealt with. And we still have that Giratina and the Xerneas looming. And he is going to go for Sucker Punch here. Wow, I didn't think he would actually uh, go for that. But I just went for the foul play. And the off chance that he wanted to switch, I really didn't think he was going to, though. But, I mean, I outspeed this thing. So I, I figured he would just try to go for the play rough, just in case I, like, I don't know, do something silly. I don't know what I would do. But, um, yeah, it's, it's minimal damage. Burn Mega Mawile. Going for Sucker Punch, non-stab on a physically defensive Eveltal. That really didn't do too much at all. So... Sucker Punch was probably my better play, though. I don't know why I clicked Foul Play. That was just silly. I didn't want to waste the Sucker Punch, either. I only have eight of them. I don't know if, <laughs> I don't know if I'm going to get into some kind of war where I'm going to need it with uh, going up against Giratina or something. Who knows? Who knows? So, at this point, what is he going to go into? I mean, he honestly just gets a free Geomancy here if he wants to go into uh, Xerneas right now. Which I really hope he doesn't, because... I don't know if I can stop him, to be honest. Uh, and depending on how much speed he's running to, I might be able to outspeed him and taunt him, preventing him from Geomancy. Uh, I'm scared. I'm really scared. I think that's his play to make right now, too, because if he goes into Clefable, I can taunt that and then uh, potentially beat that one-on-one -on -one because it will be poisoned and it's going to take Hazard's damage, too. So his only play would be to go into... If he does go into Clefable, his only play would be to Moonblast. And that's not going to be doing enough. Because I will be able to recover and he will not. It's taking a long time to think about this play as well. He may be doing some calcs. I don't really know. Depending on what he wants to go into. So what does he have left? He's got the Xerneas Clefable. And he does go into the Xerneas. Oh, that's so scary. That is so scary. I so hope that this thing is Choice Scarf and not freaking Geomancy, because if it is, I think we lose right here, which is a shame because this battle is almost a half an hour long, and I feel like we've uh, been able to keep ourselves in it, but it's not going to last much longer if this thing is a free Geomancy. I guess my only play is to taunt it here, to try to outspeed it. I've got a little bit of speed investment. And I know Xerneas doesn't run max speed most of the time. It runs modest with some speed, but I don't know what my opponent is running. That is for sure. I don't have any switch-ins to this. Uh, Kyogre, I doubt that it outspeeds a plus two Xerneas. I mean, I can try to switch it in right here. Hope that he's Choice Scarf and just kills me. That would be the best case scenario. Because then I get a switch into... I, I don't know what. Moonblast just kills everything. <laughs> Unfortunately. Because I lost Tentacruel. Uh, he is going to go for the Geomancy. I think we just got swept. Whoa, that animation. Not even bad. Not even bad. So he's going to activate his Power Herb here. And... Man, that's really cool. That is really freaking cool. That's one thing I like about Ubers is all the amazing animations that you get to see. Not to mention the fact that the 3D models of these legendary Pokemon are just powerful. So powerful. We're going to get hurt by the burn. And oh, I didn't even finish the thought about what he had left on his team. Um, I don't know what that last Pokemon is. I know he's got Giratina and Xerneas and Clefable. He's got one other one, too. Oh, the Bidoof. That's right. The Bidoof hasn't seen any action. Everything else on his team is poisoned. As you can uh, tell by the yellow Pokeballs there. I guess I just click Water Spout here. Or Origin Pulse. It, it doesn't... No, not Water Spout. Why would I click... Thankfully, I came to my senses before I clicked Water Spout. Because I have, like, no HP left. Why? Why on earth would I click Water Spout with 28 HP? Oh my goodness, this is why I'm losing. 
My only hope here is to stall this thing out of poison, basically. So, Mewtwo's not going to do anything for me, because Giratina is just, just a hard stop to it. So this is where it gets foddered. I have no choice. I really have no choice. I don't know if we can survive if we don't Mega Evolve, because we don't gain that fairy weakness. Pretty sure Moonblast still Oko's me. Pretty freaking sure it does. Um, switching makes no sense because Moonblast just kills everything. Definitely kills uh, Eveltal in one hit. Definitely kills Zekrom in one hit. So there's really nothing I can do here. Did I really just get swept by the Xerneas? No. There, where there's a will, there's a way. We're going to figure out something. I'm, I'm not going to go down without the Xerneas going down. Like, if it sweeps me, it's going to die, too. That's just what it is. So I think my play here is to sack Mewtwo, sack Zekrom, and then hope that after all that poison damage that a Dark Aura boosted Sucker Punch from a defensive Eveltal will finish off the Xerneas, despite it being a not very effective hit. I don't see anything else working. I really don't. I'll just click Drain Punch. It, it doesn't really matter. I, I don't think I survive. And if I do, the chip damage will be nice. And that just Oko's. Unbelievable. Granted, I had no uh, HP investment there because I was a um, yeah, I was an offensive Mewtwo, so really no reason to be involved with the HP investment. Involved with the HP investment. That sounds uh, kinkier than what I had originally anticipated. I don't know. It, it just sounded different in my head. Anyway, uh, I think our only play here is to just go into Zekrom and sack it, which really is unfortunate because I still don't know how I'm going to beat Giratina. I'm going to have to taunt it and then just foul play it and hope he doesn't get uh, a thousand defense drops with Shadow Ball. So it looks like Eveltal is going to have to uh, take on the world, basically. I really hope that after this next turn of poison damage that he's going to be in range of Sucker Punch. That's that's literally my only hope of winning this match, or at least not getting swept by this thing. This thing is so powerful. It's ridiculous how powerful this thing is. Like, it just, it just has a stranglehold on the whole tier, basically. Extremely limiting in team building, too. Like, every single team has to have a check to this thing. So he does go for the Moonblast. And poor Zeke going down. Didn't get to do much in this uh, battle. And that does bring him down to about 15% of his max HP. And this is what it comes down to right here. This is where all of the marbles are on the line. Can Eveltal take this back for us? We'll have to see. Going to go for a Sucker Punch. It's my only play. It is the play. And we need Sith here to be super ultra mega extra clutch. That is what I need from you right now. Come on, come on, come on. Yes, yes, the Xerneas going down to that sucker punch. Oh my gosh, that was so nerve wracking. Like my palms are sweating right now. My palms are literally sweating right now. Crisis semi averted, even though it swept half my team by itself. Still, <laughs> we're still in this because the only has left is Clefable, Bidoof, and wait a minute, did Clefable go down? I don't think it did. Yeah, Clefable's here. Clefable, Bidoof, Giratina. Okay, so it was it was four to one. I gotta kill four Pokemon. We're, we killed one though. We killed one. We can do it. One of them's a Bidoof. Watch that be uh, what gives us the most trouble though, because that thing is at full health. It's completely fresh. Um, he's probably going to go for Moonblast because he knows I have Taunt here. And I don't know that I can really do anything about that. I think I have to Taunt him. Letting him get up a wish could be uh, really bad. I don't want to have to waste any Roost or anything. Well, maybe he will go for Moonblast. I think he's going to go for Moonblast. I really do think he's going to go for Moonblast. I'm so tempted to click Sucker Punch right now just to make that prediction. 
but I have to taunt. That's the safe play. I need to play safe here. We need to be calm, cool, collected, make smart plays, and get ourselves back into this. It's not over yet. So he is going to go for the moon blast. That was a good play on my opponent's part. I knew he was going to do that. Like, Sucker Punch would have killed there, but I had to taunt him. That was just... That's what it is. It's all right. He is taking poison damage at least, and uh, we can roost up. Or, or we can just kill this thing. I am faster than it. So I, I could just foul play here. I'm pretty sure that would kill it. I don't know if that's worth it. I mean, if I roost, I'm risking a crit moon blast, which could potentially kill me, and that is very scary. But I am going to go for it. I feel like that's what I should be doing. So he's going to moon blast again because I'm pretty sure that's his only attacking move. I don't think we actually saw all four moves on this thing. As he does not get a crit, thankfully. Actually, we may have been able to take a crit there. Possibly. With very, very low HP. It's potential. It's it's potential? Does that make any sense? It's potential? I guess it does. It didn't sound right in my head. Why am I so tired? I, like, got seriously tired in the middle of this battle. You can probably tell because my commentary has been steadily deteriorating. And I'm thinking things that make sense don't make sense. And things that... I just, I just don't ever make sense. What am I talking about? I'm going to go for Sucker Punch here. Take out this Clefable. And two down, two to go. Or one and a half to go, depending on uh, if you want to count Bidoof as a full Pokemon or not. I'm not really sure how that goes. Not really sure how that goes. I And I really don't know what Bidoof is going to do to me. I have no clue. Uh, th th this person was... Talking about something about a quick claw on Twitter. I talked to him briefly, or he responded to something that I had uh, tweeted. So I think this thing might be quick claw Bidoof, which is a complete gimmick, obviously. I mean, a Bidoof in general is a complete gimmick, but it's just cool to see it. So I'm not even mad that he has quick claw if that is what his set is. That could really screw me over, though. So, depending on what he has, I really hope this thing can't toxic me. I have to roost, though. I don't have any other play, really. I don't know what he's going to do. So I kind of want to just scout here. Hope that he doesn't have Toxic, otherwise I lose. Uh, he's going to go for the Rock Climb, actually. Don't get the confusion. Oh, my goodness. Don't get the confusion. No! He gets the 20% confusion. Pretty sure it's 20%. Oh, my gosh. That stinks. I could have just went for Sucker Punch there and killed him. I really did not want Giratina coming back in, though. Um, when I wasn't at as much HP as I could possibly have. Just because I don't want to risk anything. Uh, and, and that rock climb didn't do much. But the confusion is a problem. So I'm going to have to toxic stall this thing. Or at least until the confusion is gone. I don't want Giratina coming back in while I'm confused. Like I'm not having that because that could lose me the match. And uh, it's imperative that I taunt that thing. Like I need to taunt it. I don't want to get burned. That's a problem. He goes for the Super Fang. So I kind of figured he would be Super Fang. The Rock Climb Super Fang. I don't know what else he has. I'm guessing he's not toxic because he hasn't gone for it. And I have to Roost again here. As he can just continually spam Super Fang. I have to spam Roost until I'm not confused anymore. And two turns in a row. Sith is not hitting himself in confusion. Talk about Clutch. He is really coming through for us right now. And we're going to get hit by another Super Fang. Super Fang also has a chance to miss. So that would be great if he could miss because then we could be at full health and potentially break out of our confusion this turn. That would be like the best case scenario. He is hurt by Toxic again. I think we have two more turns before he dies to the Toxic. And I still haven't attacked this thing. Why is an Aveltal Toxic stalling a Bidoof? Why is that what this match is coming down to? think you've seen everything you haven't seen this in ubers this is new meta stuff right here and we're finally gonna hit ourselves in confusion this was the third turn as he does go for super fang again and i really hope that we don't hit ourselves in confusion because that plus rock climb is that gonna be enough to kill me i don't know if it will i really don't know if it will he hasn't uh, shown the Quick Claw yet, so maybe he doesn't have it. Maybe he has something else. Could be Evil Light for all I know. Or it could have been Focus Sash. I really don't know. I don't know what to expect. Look at his face, though. Badoof just doesn't care. 
He's like, oh, you're a giant legendary bird thingamajiggy that, like, eats souls? That's fine. I don't care because I'm a freaking Bidoof. That's right. And, oh, we avoid the Super Fang there, which is perfect because we've also snapped out of confusion. So, uh, the Bidoof is going to go down to the toxic damage because... I didn't even attack this thing. I toxic stalled the Bidoof. What is wrong with me? Why does that have to be my win condition? I would have just killed it if I didn't get confused. <laughs> now Giratina's going to come in. And I think we have this on lockdown now because I'm free to taunt it. He can't kill me with a crit. Uh, he can't kill me in two turns, even if he gets a spadef drop. Because I do resist Shadow Ball. And we know this thing's full moveset. So I'm pretty sure that Iveltal has taken this back for us. As he does try to go for the sleep talk there. Uh, that was really his only play, just because he wasn't going to wake up anyway. Uh, it's unfortunate that we're not going to get any poison damage helping us out here. We're just going to have to kill it with repeated sucker punches and foul plays. Sucker punch might do more, just because this Giratina may not have much in the way of uh, attack IVs. We'll have to see. I guess we can just gauge it here, see how much it does. And that does solid damage, actually. That does okay damage. Not even bad. He's going to stay fast asleep. He doesn't go for sleep talk because that's not actually an attacking move. So, yeah, that's that's good for us. He is going to get lefties, so it's going to take at least two more hits to take him out. I can go for Sucker Punch because he's forced to go for an attack, so Sucker Punch will never fail. That's why Taunt and Sucker Punch is such a good combination. And uh, he is going to wake up, he's going to go for the Shadow Ball, and that can't kill me, so that's going to wrap up the win for us. That did nothing! <laughs> what? Did that even do 20? I don't know if it did. That was pitiful damage, wow. I thought Giratina was doing pretty decent damage earlier on. But I guess um, Iveltal just doesn't care. Iveltal was the MVP in this match, even though it didn't see a lot of screen time earlier on, it really just came through for us in the end. Picking off that Xerneas, I think barely picking off that Xerneas, that HP bar was dropping so slow. Um, and then taking this back for us, we were down 4-1 to one at that point. In danger of uh, just getting utterly swept by that Xerneas. And uh, Sith, Sith the Iveltal coming through. This was a long video, so if you made it all the way to the end, you watched it all the way through, kudos to you. I uh, would appreciate it also if you guys left a like or a comment if you enjoyed the video, of course. And uh, other than that, uh, that's pretty much all I have to say. I'm looking forward to the next uh, couple of battles with this team as well. Um, but that's it for this time. Uh, until next time, game on.